I always felt there was something off about our neighborhood ever since we moved in. The streets were quiet, too quiet, as if they were holding their breath, waiting for something dreadful to happen. The houses, old and gnarled like ancient trees, seemed to whisper secrets through their peeling paint and creaky porches. One evening, while the sun was dipping below the horizon, casting long shadows over the cracked pavement, I decided to take a walk. The air was crisp, the kind of cold that nibbles at your cheeks, and the sky, a deep twilight blue, was clear except for a few wisps of clouds. As I walked, the street lamps flickered on, one by one, their dim light barely cutting through the gathering darkness. Nice night for a stroll, isn't it? A voice called out. Startled, I turned toward the sound. It was Mr. Thompson, my neighbor from two doors down, leaning against his fence. He was a peculiar man, always watching from his window, his eyes like dark hollows in his pale face. Yes, it sure is, I replied, trying to sound friendly. But, inside, a chill ran down my spine. There was something unsettling about his gaze how it never seemed to blink. I see you're out walking alone, he continued, his voice a low drawl. You should be careful. This neighborhood, it's not what it seems. I forced a laugh. Oh, I think I'll manage. But his words echoed in my mind as I quickened my pace. What did he mean by that? As I moved further away, I glanced back. He was still there, watching. The further I walked, the more I noticed how silent it was. No cars, no people, just the echo of my footsteps and the rustle of the wind through the trees. Suddenly, a cat darted out from a bush, its eyes glowing in the lamplight. I jumped heart racing, then laughed at my own nervousness. As I approached the end of the street, I saw the old Henderson place. It had been abandoned for years, ever since the family left town abruptly. Rumors swirled about why they had gone, tales of hauntings and dark happenings. The house loomed in the darkness, its windows like blind eyes staring out into the night. Curiosity overcame my fear. I approached the gate, its iron bars cold and wet under my fingers. It creaked open with a mournful sound, and I stepped onto the path leading to the front door. The air grew colder, and I could see my breath puffing out in front of me. As I reached the porch, the front door, inexplicably, swung open with a groan. Hello? I called out, my voice sounding small and feeble in the vast darkness. No answer came, only the sound of my heart thudding in my chest. I stepped inside, the floorboards groaning under my weight. The air was thick with dust and the smell of decay. Is anyone here? I ventured again my flashlight beam dancing over peeling wallpaper and abandoned furniture. Shadows played tricks on my eyes, making me see movements where there was none. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed from the upper floor. I froze, every nerve on edge. Hello? I tried again, my voice barely a whisper now. The silence that followed was suffocating. Gathering my courage, I slowly ascended the staircase, the wood creaking ominously with each step. When I reached the top, I hesitated. The hallway stretched out before me, doors lining either side, each one closed. Which one had the noise come from? 
As I pondered, a soft whisper floated down the hall, leave. Panic gripped me, but my legs wouldn't move. Then, as if drawn by an unseen force, I approached the door at the end of the hall. My hand shook as I reached for the knob, the metal icy beneath my fingertips. I turned it slowly, and the door opened with a sigh. Inside, the room was shrouded in darkness. My flashlight flickered, then died, leaving me in pitch blackness. Who's there? I stammered, my breaths coming in quick gasps. A cold hand touched my shoulder, and I spun around, screaming. But there was nothing, no one there. I stumbled back heart pounding, and fled down the stairs, out of the house, and didn't stop running until I reached my own front door, slamming it shut behind me. Back in the safety of my home, I leaned against the door, gasping for breath. The house was silent, too silent. As I calmed down, I realized the neighborhood held secrets, dark and terrifying. And now, I was a part of them. The next morning, I found an old photograph on my porch. It showed the Henderson family, standing in front of their house, all of them smiling. But, in the background, hidden in the shadows, was a figure, its features blurred, its presence menacing. My blood ran cold. The story wasn't over. It was just beginning, that photograph haunted me, day and night. I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever had touched me in the Henderson house hadn't let go. It lingered, a dark cloud over my everyday life. Days passed, and the image of the blurred figure in the photograph began to appear everywhere, in the mirror, at the edge of my vision and in my dreams. It never spoke, but its silent presence was oppressive, terrifying. I couldn't escape the sensation that it was watching me, waiting. One foggy evening, as the mist rolled in like a living thing, I heard a knock at my door. Reluctant, fearful, I answered. It was Mrs. Green, an elderly woman from across the street, her eyes wide with concern. Dear, I've been meaning to talk to you, she said, her voice trembling. It's about the Henderson house. You shouldn't have gone in there. I invited her in, curious and desperate for any information. She sat down, her hands clasped tightly in her lap her eyes darting around as if afraid of being overheard. That house, she began, has a history darker than the night itself. It's not just haunted by ghosts, but by something much older, more malevolent. What do you mean? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. She leaned closer, lowering her voice to a fearful whisper. The figure in your photograph, I've seen it before. Many years ago, when I was a little girl. It's not human, not a ghost, but something else. It preys on the living, feeds on their fear. A chill ran down my spine as she spoke. The room seemed to grow colder, the shadows deeper. How do I get rid of it? I asked, my voice shaky. Mrs. Green shook her head sadly. I don't know if you can, but there's someone who might, she said. Old man Crowley, he's lived here longer than any of us. He knows more about the dark things in this town. Determined to end this nightmare, I thanked her and left immediately for Crowley's house. 
The old man lived on the outskirts of the neighborhood, his home a crumbling relic surrounded by overgrown weeds. The gate creaked ominously as I pushed it open, my heart pounding in my chest. I knocked on the door, and it slowly swung open. There he stood, a stooped figure with piercing blue eyes that seemed to see right through me. I've been expecting you, he said, his voice a raspy whisper. I stepped inside, the house smelled of must and old books. Crowley led me to a small room filled with ancient tomes and flickering candles. Sit, he commanded, and I obeyed. You've encountered the shade, he said, naming the figure with a gravitas that made the air feel heavy. It's an ancient spirit, bound to the Henderson house by blood and tragedy. Why is it following me? I asked, my hands trembling. Because you've seen it, and it has seen you, Crowley explained. It's marked you. But there is a way to break its hold. Tell me, please, I pleaded. He handed me a small, leather-bound book. This contains a ritual, but beware, it requires great courage and a pure heart. Any hint of fear, and the shade will consume you. I took the book, its cover cold and smooth under my fingers. What do I need to do? I asked, determined to face this horror. You must go back to the Henderson house, to the very room where you first saw it, he instructed. At the stroke of midnight, you must perform the ritual written here. My heart sank. The thought of returning to that place filled me with dread, but I knew I had no choice. Thank you, I said, standing to leave. Be careful. Crowley warned, his eyes stern. The shade is cunning and cruel. As I left his house, the sun had set and the world was bathed in the blue twilight of dusk. I walked home, the book clutched tightly under my arm, preparing myself mentally for what was to come. The night arrived quickly and with it, a sense of impending doom. I gathered a few items listed in the book, a candle, salt, and an old mirror, and set out for the Henderson house once more. The streets were eerily silent, the mist thicker than before, enveloping me like a cold blanket. As I reached the house, its presence loomed large and menacing. I pushed open the gate my heart pounding so loud I could hear it echoing in the night air. The path to the front door seemed longer, more treacherous than before. I forced myself to move forward, step by step, fighting the urge to run. Reaching the door, I hesitated, my hand hovering over the knob. Taking a deep breath, I pushed it open and stepped inside. The darkness was oppressive, the silence deafening. I made my way to the room upstairs, each step heavy with dread. Setting up the items for the ritual, I glanced at the clock. Five minutes to midnight. The air grew colder, and I could feel the eyes of the shade on me, watching from the shadows. I lit the candle its flame flickering in the drafty room, and placed the mirror on the floor, sprinkling salt in a circle around me. As the clock struck midnight, I began to recite the words from the book. The words felt strange on my tongue, ancient and powerful. The candlelight wavered, shadows dancing on the walls. A wind rose howling through the house like the cries of the damned. Fear gripped me, but I continued, my voice growing louder. Suddenly, the mirror cracked, 
a spider web of lines radiating from the center. A dark figure appeared in the broken glass, its eyes red and malevolent. It reached out, a hand made of shadows stretching towards me. I recoiled, stumbling backward as the hand of shadows grew closer. The room spun around me, the howling wind and flickering candlelight creating a vortex of fear and darkness. The shade's presence filled the room, suffocating in cold, as if draining the very warmth from my bones. Despite the terror gripping my heart, I forced myself to continue the ritual. The words of the ancient tome seemed to hold power, each syllable resonating through the room with a force that pushed against the darkness. The shade recoiled slightly, its form wavering as if in pain. You cannot banish me so easily, it hissed, a voice like the scraping of metal on stone. Its words were chilling, filled with malice and ancient hatred. I struggled to maintain my focus, the salt circle around me a fragile barrier between the entity and myself. The clock's ticking seemed to slow, each second stretching out as I recited the final lines of the ritual. The air thickened, charged with energy, and the mirror shattered completely, pieces scattering across the wooden floor. The shade screamed, a sound that pierced the air like a physical force, making the house shake to its very foundations. I felt a sharp pain in my chest as the entity's anger manifested physically, its hatred palpable. The candle flickered wildly, threatening to go out, but I shielded it with my body, whispering the last words with desperate urgency. Be gone, creature of shadow, return to the darkness from whence you came. With a final, ear-splitting shriek, the shade lunged at me, its form massive and terrifying. But just as its hands were about to close around my throat, a brilliant light erupted from the broken mirror. It engulfed the room, blinding and pure. The shade howled, its form dissolving in the light, shrinking back into whatever hellish dimension it had come from. The light grew, filling the room, the house, the entire neighborhood, burning away the darkness. As the light reached its peak, the house trembled, dust and debris falling from the ceiling. I covered my head, crouching low to the ground, the ritual book clutched tightly in my hands. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, the light vanished. I was left in darkness, the only sound my ragged breathing and the distant ticking of the clock. Slowly, I stood, my body shaking. The room was in ruins, the furniture overturned, the windows blown out. But there was a peace, a silence that had not been there before. The oppressive presence of the shade was gone. Exhausted but relieved, I made my way downstairs, stepping over debris and shattered glass. The night air felt different as I exited the house, fresher, cleaner. The mist had cleared, and the stars twinkled brightly above, a sharp contrast to the darkness that had consumed the neighborhood only hours before. I walked back to my home, the events of the night replaying in my mind. I had faced something ancient and evil, and I had survived. But deep down, I knew the battle was not truly over. Such creatures do not disappear so easily, they linger in the shadows, waiting for their chance to return. As I reached my doorstep, I noticed something lying on the porch. It was another photograph, old and faded, but clearly depicting the Henderson house. In it, a figure stood in the foreground, its back to the camera. The figure was me. Chills ran down my spine as I picked up the photograph. How was this possible? I had never taken such a picture. And yet, here it was, a message or perhaps a warning. The shade might have been banished, but its reach was long, its memory long-lasting. I entered my house, locking the door behind me. The familiar surroundings were a comfort, but the photograph in my hand was a stark reminder that this ordeal might not be over. I sat down, weary but vigilant, and began to plan my next steps. For now, the neighborhood was quiet, the evil at bay. But I knew better than to think it was defeated. I would need to prepare, to study the ritual further, and to strengthen my defenses. For the shade, or whatever it was, might one day return, and I would be ready. The night grew deeper, 
the moon a thin crescent in the sky. Somewhere, an owl hooted, a sound both eerie and familiar. The world was full of mysteries and darkness, but also of light and hope. I would hold on to that hope, cling to it as I awaited the next chapter of this never-ending battle against the darkness, as I sat in the dim light of my living room, the photograph still clutched in my hand, the reality of the situation began to truly sink in. The silence of the house was oppressive, each creak and groan a reminder of the night's terror. Despite the exhaustion tugging at my eyelids, fear spurred me to vigilance. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching, waiting for a moment of weakness to strike. Days passed, each more unnerving than the last. The photograph lay on my coffee table, a constant reminder of the unresolved nightmare. Occasionally, I caught glimpses of shadows moving just beyond the corner of my vision, heard whispers that seemed to come from nowhere. Was it my imagination, or was the shade still with me, biding its time? Determined to end this once and for all, I began to research. The old books I gathered were filled with arcane knowledge, spells, and rituals. Each page turned added to my resolve. I would not live in fear, I would not let this darkness linger in my life. One evening, as the wind held outside and rain lashed against the windows, I prepared for the final confrontation. I set up the ritual in the basement, the only part of the house that felt untouched by the previous encounters. Candles flickered as I drew symbols on the floor with chalk, each line crisp and precise. As the clock struck midnight, I began the ritual. My voice was steady, strong, filled with the power of someone who has faced their fears and emerged stronger. The air thickened around me, the darkness palpable as if absorbing the light from the candles. Then, it appeared. Not just a shadow this time, but a form, large and menacing, filling the room with malice. You cannot banish me, it growled its voice a cacophony of every fear I'd ever felt. I am eternal. Not here, not in my world, I replied, my voice resolute. I continued the incantation, each word a strike against the darkness. The entity roared, a sound that shook the foundation of the house, but I did not falter. I could feel the power of the ritual working, the symbols on the floor glowing with a brilliant light. With a final, defiant scream, the entity charged at me. For a moment, I thought it was the end, but then the light from the symbols erupted, engulfing the room. The shade screamed in agony, its form disintegrating before my eyes until nothing but a whisper of its presence remained. And then, silence. The candles flickered once more in a gentle breeze that seemed to cleanse the air. I breathed deeply, feeling lighter, as though a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. It was over. Really over this time. I dismantled the ritual setup and went upstairs. The first light of dawn was breaking over the horizon, casting a pale, beautiful glow through the rain-streaked windows. I opened the front door and stepped outside. The air was fresh, the remnants of the night storm washing away the last traces of darkness. The neighborhood felt different as I walked through it in the early morning light. Neighbors greeted me with smiles, unaware of the battle that had raged while they slept. I felt a sense of peace, a quiet triumph. The photograph, which had brought so much fear, was now just a piece of paper. I took it out to the backyard and burned it, watching as the flames consumed the image. As the ash fluttered away on the wind, I felt a final release from the haunting. Life returned to normal, or as normal as it could be after such events. I strengthened the bonds with my neighbors, shared meals, and laughter. The darkness that had once felt so oppressive now seemed a distant memory. However, the true victory was not just in banishing the shade but in overcoming the fear it had instilled in me. I had faced the darkest of entities and emerged victorious. This knowledge gave me a new strength, a new understanding of my own resilience. As I settled into bed that night, the house quiet around me, I realized that the true horror wasn't the apparitions or the supernatural threats. It was living in fear. Now, free from that fear, I could truly rest. Sleep came easily, 
deep and untroubled, a well-deserved peace after the storm.